What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at B-Link's brand new SER8. And it's actually been a little while since we've seen a B-Link PC, at least a new model, hit the mark with a new APU. But I think now they're back on track because I've actually seen a few of these released. Some of them are using the Intel Ultra, which not a lot of people are really interested in. But what we've got here is a pretty powerful Ryzen 7 8845HS powered mini PC. Now they've got a totally new design and I do like it. Kind of Mac mini vibes if you ask me. I'm not sure if they're going to be offering any extra color variants, but they have changed some of the internals here. Brand new cooling system. There's a dust filter system in here along with an M.2 cooling system. And yeah, I mean, this new design is super elegant. If you remember, some of their other ones did get a bit crazy uh, with elongated cases, bunch of different colors, bright orange, bright green, bright blue. This is more subtle, and this would definitely sit on anybody's desk and look really nice. We've got a bit to cover with this mini PC, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA. As you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're going to email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Inside of the box, along with the SER8, we're going to get an HDMI cable and their brand new super small form factor 120 watt power supply. B-Link was kind of the first to come to market with these smaller power supplies, and I love seeing these, especially given the fact that this is still using a barrel jack and not USB Type-C. Taking a look at the I.O. of the new SER8 up front here, we've got a 3.5mm combo jack for a headphone or microphone, full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2, and we've also got a USB 4 port up front here running at 40 gigs, so we can easily connect an eGPU or super-fast storage. Moving around back, we've got two more full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, USB-C, which is USB 3.2. We've also got a USB 2.0 port and another 3.5 millimeter audio jack. In total, we can do four displays out utilizing the display port, HDMI, USB-C back here, and USB 4 up front. Like I mentioned, they have kind of revamped the internals here and getting the bottom off is super easy. It's actually four screws. Once we pull this off, you'll see it's got a little dust filter which isn't like a magnetic dust filter. It's actually made out of metal. We do have to unscrew this with two more screws to access the RAM and storage. And this utilizes SODIMM DDR5 running in dual channel up to 5600 megahertz. We've also got a cooler on that M.2 drive that came pre-installed, but there's an extra slot here. And both of these are 2280 Gen 4 NVMe SSD slots. As for the APU we have here, it's the AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. Zen 4 cores, we've got 8 of them with 16 threads, got a base clock of 3.8 and a boost up to 5.1. We've also got the Radeon 780M iGPU. Based on RDNA 3, this will boost up to 2700 MHz. You can add up to 64 GB of DDR5 RAM here, two M.2 2280 NVMe drives, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11. The first thing I wanted to do was take a look at the BIOS and while not everything's unlocked, from advanced we do have quite a bit that we can actually modify with this mini PC. From AMD CVS, NBIO, this is gonna allow us to change the VRAM amount straight out of the box, it's at three gigs on my unit. Audio configuration, PCI loopback mode, and of course, we've got the SMU common options, which will allow us to adjust the TDP directly from the BIOS. I believe this is at 54 watts. It will boost up to 64 from what I've seen online so far. We're going to leave it at auto to see what it'll do. But yeah, I mean, if we ever wanted to, we could head into our smart shift control. 
and modify this. Yeah, it's already set at 54 watts. So we'll have a little bit of a boost there, but we could go up if we want to. But I want to leave it here just to see what it does out of the box. So let's go ahead and get into Windows. So yeah, I've been up and running for a while now, and everything's been working out really well with this system. Uh, TDP is looking great here for the 8845HS. We're running that RAM in dual channel at 5600, and we've got those Radeon 780M RDNA3 graphics with three gigs dedicated to VRAM. This will automatically allocate, it's just set at three from that BIOS. I always like to take a look at what kind of TDP we're at specifically, and this thing does boost up to 64 watts. It comes back down to around 54 after about 30 seconds, and it'll slowly start dropping down to 54, but even the cooler here is working pretty well for this 8845HS. It's a very snappy system. Checking out some web browsing here. Remember, we've got Wi-Fi 6, and we'll just head over to B-Link's website. The ser 88845 hs and all of these pages load up super quickly. I am using Chrome, but I haven't had any issues with Edge. I just wanted to install Chrome here. And one thing I wanted to kind of compare this to was the M1 and the M3 chip from Apple, mainly because, you know, they definitely made this kind of look like a little Mac mini. What I'm going to do here is run a browser benchmark, and this is known as Speedometer 3.0. This is going to run through a bunch of different tasks that people do in browsers, and it's going to give us a score at the end. I've also run this on an iMac with an M1 chip and an iMac with an M3 chip. On this B-Link SER8 with that Ryzen 8845HS, we scored an 18.3. And again, I wanted to test this on the Apple M1 and the M3 chip. Using the Chrome browser, on the M1, we scored a 25.3. On the M3, we're up to 37.9. I'm actually really surprised, and I did run this a few times on the 8845HS just to see if we could get up into the 20s, and 18.3 was the highest score I got on this mini PC. So it kind of goes to show you optimizations with those new Apple ARM chips. The M1 is getting a bit dated now, and these were both run on 16 gig iMacs. Checking out some 4K video playback on this little B-Link. YouTube 4K 60fps HDR. Got a couple drop frames on the load in. That's really normal. If you try this on a high-end PC, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Usually I reset that resolution just so we can drop it back down to zero. But through this whole video here, we only had two drop frames, and those happen once we hit play. Throughout, no more. And I knew that the 8845HS could definitely run 4K video. You want to stream it, you want to play it natively, you're really not going to have an issue with this chip. I also ran Geekbench 6 just to see if this thing was keeping up with the other PCs using the same chip. And yeah, I mean, we're getting some pretty decent scores here. Coming in with a single of 2,657, and we're getting so close to 13,000 on multi with the 8845HS. Now I want to move over to some PC gaming, and the first one we have here is Mortal Kombat 1. Always loved throwing at least one fighting game in. We're at 1080 low settings and FSR set to performance. At 900p, we can actually take it up to medium with FSR set to balance, but at 1080, we do need to drop it down to low settings. I also tested out PAL World, 900p, low, and we still don't have official FSR here. You can add a mod to add FSR and even Intel XESS scaling, but I didn't do it here. This is just the vanilla game and we're seeing an average of around 68 FPS. When it comes to Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, we have to drop this down to 900p on the 780M, and it really doesn't matter what, you know, APU we're using with that RDNA 3i GPU. You can see from Afterburner, we're up there at around 55, 56 watts, and we're at low with FSR set to balance, still dipping under 60 FPS. I ran the built-in benchmark for Red Dead 2, we're at 1080 low FSR set to balance, and on the initial load in, I always get that really low minimum there. We're at 9, maximum of 157, but we did get an average of 64. I also ran the built-in benchmark for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, balance preset, FSR is at balance, and we're also using frame gen technology. So this is the built-in frame gen, not fluid motion that you enable from adrenaline software. It does work pretty decently on these iGPUs. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, and we're at low low, so we do have to go in and turn everything down. FSR, set to performance. Not too bad, we're seeing an average in this really intense area here of 72 FPS.
Overall, we've got a pretty good performant little mini PC, and again, it's been a little while since we've seen something new from B-Link. They really did revamp their design, kind of going with that Mac vibe. And when initially making this video, I wasn't sure they were offering different color variants. You can actually get this in Frost Silver or Space Gray. I personally think it looks pretty good. Their new cooling system is working out quite well for 65 watts. We didn't go over 84 degrees Celsius with this unit while doing all of the testing here. So yeah, not a bad little mini PC, and if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links to the B-Link website. I think they may have these listed up on Amazon. I'll see what I can find, leave everything in the description. But if there's anything else you want to see running on the SER8, just let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.